Katie Parker here for Galvanize, joined by Julie Stewart Binks, host on Fubo Sports Network for the Galvanize Who Not Do series. Now, Julie, let's just jump right into it. Um, your undergrad thesis is where I want to start. You wrote it over the sexual harassment of women's sports journalists. That was 11 years ago. Where did your heart and head go when you saw that Washington Post article this month? 11 years later. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to speak with you and to be able to tell my story and, and give some insight into the journey that I've had so far, because it has been a bit of a roller coaster. But seeing the story come out with the Washington football team was pretty triggering. And I think that it was like that for a lot of women. I had a couple different texts from people around the industry who were like, this is really kind of tough to see and to read it because we've all dealt with it. And like, I've said things like this before where I, you know, I've gone on the record being like, I've experienced sexual harassment in every single job I've been in. And people will say, Oh, that, how can that happen? How, you know, that's, that can't be right. It's like, no, that is, that is what it is. And for a lot of people, you learn how to block it out and you learn how to look past it. And because you don't want to get upset about it all the time. For many women, anytime we've ever brought up anything like, oh, this person made me feel uncomfortable, this person said, said this, or like you actually go to HR about complaints, it's like, well, you, you're kind of the problem about this. Well, like you need to toughen up. And for me, like my first experiences in sports broadcasting were with harassment. And it's kind of jarring because I was like, I was in my second year of university in Canada is what we call it. And I was doing a report. We interviewed the quarterback right after practice on the field. And I just had like, I remember the whole team was just standing right around me, maybe 40 guys. And they were all like uh, making like wooing noises and laughing and doing all this stuff. And, and I had no idea what was going on. I just thought they were all sort of maybe laughing at the quarterback or they had some kind of inside joke. And then like, I looked out and I saw, I saw guys with their pants down and we were like, what just happened? I, I remember emailing the football coach and there was a bunch of people on the email. I was like, I was treated extremely unprofessionally. I was harassed while I was trying to interview your quarterback. Like, first of all, that's unacceptable. Secondly, also I'm volunteering and I'm a young woman trying to learn how to do this. And this is how I'm being treated. And I'm, I'll never forget how he responded. He was just like, well, you should, he CC'd every, and more people on this email. I was like, you should learn how to deal with this if you want to be a sports broadcaster. And I was like, okay, I know in my head, that's not the right answer to this situation. And so that then made me sort of like interested in how women have been treated in broadcasting. I've experienced it on national levels and in some of my, my jobs now. I've gone to HR about stuff. And the hard part is, is that like, sometimes you go to HR, you tell them about stuff and nothing happens. And you're like, but I, how does that person still have a job? And that's, there's, there's a lot of people that are in, that are working, that are being promoted, that are still decision makers that are extremely sexist, misogynist, and you know, sexually harassing women every day. And so it's still a huge issue. You've talked about the year you left Barstool before you got to Fubo, um, that it was the hardest year of your life, that you would be walking down the street and just start crying. And I really felt that. I recently had the hardest year of my life, followed by one of the absolute best. Um, so what did you learn about yourself during that year? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a really fascinating year because I had left LA, gone to New York, took on this opportunity that wasn't the right one for me and was really thankful that I, it, it ended. I felt like I'd done a lot in my career. I'd worked at FS1 on air, I'd worked at ESPN on air, I'd worked at, you know, Barstool, which was people, so many people know about it. And I like couldn't get anyone to respond to my emails, to meet with me, anything. It was like everything in that energy wise was just like, no, that's not happening right, right now. And it was, it was really difficult because I had to then remind, I really, really had to dig deep and like remind myself, like, 
okay, like you have all these skills, you have all this experience. Like, I don't know why this isn't working right now, but you have to believe in yourself so much. I have become a bit more spiritual since that time of just like um, meditating and kind of understanding, like sort of stopping the, I have, you know, we deal with a lot of anxiety in this industry, but just sort of thinking like, what is it that you want? And sort of try to like slow down the chaos in your head. And I started to find that like, everything was wanting me to do comedy. And I was like, well, I should just do that. Like, I don't, I don't know. I've never wanted to do stand-up comedy in my entire life. I think it's like terrifying. I was like, well, why not? I kind of just started to do things that, that I, that were opening for me and that made me feel good. And that was also improv. And once I started doing that, I just like kind of got some more skills, got a bit more perspective and got more confidence in myself. And I'd say like, it's the hardest thing to sort of just like create confidence when you are at the bottom. And even like at the time, my, my agent definitely didn't have any confidence in me. It felt like, it felt like the whole thing had just been taken away. And I always tell people like, if you, you have to figure out a way, whatever the vehicle is to believe in yourself and double down in it, maybe it's tricks. Maybe it's like looking back at your old work and being like, yeah, I am good. The short of it was just like going through the doors that were open, which were unconventional. And then just like really, really believing that I know I'm good at this. I've definitely been in that headspace more times than I would like to count. Um, few, you feel like few people believe in you. You just need that one shot, but those doors aren't opening. Do you, looking back, you've come this far, you're hosting your own shows now on Fubo. Do you believe in yourself now? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I always did. And I kind of like tried to learn of like separating, separating like, oh, the job is, has told me that I'm good. Um, and knowing that even when I had nothing that I was very good at this and that it just wasn't for whatever reason, the puzzle pieces just like weren't clicking at that time. But one of the things that I've said was like, during that time, I had to really figure out who I was because whenever I really rested on the laurels of saying, people were like, oh, this is Julie from Fox Sports One, or this is Julie from ESPN. And like, you had instant cachet when you walked into a room and like, yeah, I work at ESPN. That's so cool. And to then go to, this is Julie. I learned how to be like, well, you know, I'm just taking some time off, figuring out my next option or whatever. And you kind of learn how to massage the conversation and then not talk about yourself. I didn't even want to go on dates and I didn't want to like hang out with people because I didn't want to talk about this like deeply, oddly personal, embarrassing idea that like you're unemployed and you don't really have like, oh, you worked at these places, but you don't work anywhere right now. Like why? You know, one thing starts to go in one way, in one direction and, and you stop stressing and you stop worrying so much. And the more I've learned to like that whole universe thing of like surrender and just sort of like, just go with it and stop and stop like with um being so anxious about everything and just like where are we right now okay right now I'm in quarantine I'm in Toronto these are the things I have to do I'm talking with you and I'm like I'm very excited to be in the moment and doing these things and I kind of just had to do that because in this world we all we do is worry about like I need a better job I need more money I need to do this I need to do that and it's like stop and just like be where you are. We do put so much of ourselves into this job and it's hard to separate yourself from that a lot of times. So with this series being the who, not the do, mm -hmm. um, if I asked you who you are at this moment in time, but not, you can't mention what you do. Can you do that? Yeah. Yes, definitely. I'm like, Julie Shorebanks, who is uh, very authentic, clear, very much myself. I have um, almost too much confidence in, in how I want to act and how I want to be, and that could get me in trouble or make me look like an idiot. I am uh, very close to my family, caring. I want to be someone who, that helps people. What you do is such a small part of who you are. And even what we do right now is such a small part of all the things that we have the potential to do. It does take a level of like, like comfort and, and, and understanding that like, we're so stressed in this industry that like, Oh, this will be taken away. I won't get this. But it's like, the more you can kind of just like take a deep breath and think like, everything's going to be okay. 
doesn't matter who I work for. As long as I'm happy doing what I'm doing, I will be successful. Thank you very much for taking the time to share a little bit more about yourself. Um, we really appreciate you joining us in this, in this Who Not Do series. Where do you want to direct people to be able to see you next? First of all, my show's on foodballsportsnetwork.com, which is free, which you can just type into your computer right now. Julie SB underscores my Instagram, and I pretty much just try to keep it 100% there. And then um, on Twitter, uh, JSB underscore TV. We will be keeping in touch with you and keeping up with everything that you're doing. Thank you.